This is a story that seems as though it has been lifted straight out of a Bram Stoker movie, but the horrors of exhuming a child's coffin are all too real, especially for a father in 19th century Rhode Island. Those present at the exhumation are horrified to find her corpse has moved and in a state of non-decomposition. They all conclude that she is indeed a vampire and has been draining the lifeblood of the family. Was Mercy Brown the victim of superstition or a real life vampire? Had all been well, it is likely that the Brown family of Rhode Island would mean little to anybody today, an ordinary sort of couple. George and Mary Brown moved to the town of Exeter in the 1870s when their children were young. Mary fell ill with tuberculosis, which was known as consumption in those days. The awful wasting disease that claimed so many lives in the era, and after a rapid decline, she died. The same fate soon befell her eldest daughter, Mary Olive, who succumbed in 1888. Two years later, the son Edwin fell ill with the same complaint. Against the odds, though, he fought for his life. In fact, while he struggled on, his younger sister Mercy caught the disease and perished in January 1892. Having witnessed the cruel decimation of his family, George Brown was understandably desperate to do whatever he could to save his son. Although New England was a mostly civilised part of the world at the end of the 19th century, it had a long reputation for superstition dating back to the 17th century Salem Witch Trials. With scientific knowledge of tuberculosis limited, its symptoms, including severe weight loss, were sometimes interpreted as signs that the very life of a sufferer was being sucked out of them by some malevolent force. Given that the Browns had endured more than their fair share of heartache, it was suggested that perhaps there was a sinister spirit at work within the family. So it was that George Brown agreed in March to have the bodies of his wife and two daughters exhumed. Mary and Mary Olive were recovered first and showed all the normal signs of decomposition. But when Mercy's body was brought to light, it did not. The flesh was well preserved while her hair and fingernails seemed to have actually grown. Liquid blood was recovered from the body too. Furthermore, there was speculation that the corpse was found in a different position to the one in which it had been lain two months earlier. For good measure, a few locals now piped up to say they had seen her spirit stalking the graveyard. With Mercy thus having been identified as a life-sucking vampire, her heart was removed forthwith, before being burnt on a stone. Even more bizarrely, the ashes were then mixed into a drink that was fed to Edwin. Perhaps unsurprisingly to modern eyes, this had little effect and within two months Edwin too was dead. So had George Brown spawned a demonic daughter who cheated death by feasting on the life force of her immediate family? Well, this was the conclusion to which many people had jumped. Even today, there are those who point to Mercy Brown as evidence that vampires exist outside of mere folklore. Certainly though, the circumstances of her cadaver as they were related were peculiar. However, science offers credible explanations for all the curious features. It was deep winter at the time of her death. The ground had been too frosty to dig her grave, so she was stored in a crypt above ground, awaiting later interment. 
It was, in effect, like being held in a cold storage or a refrigerator, hence the well-preserved nature of her flesh. As for her blood, it is quite possible that it coagulated in her heart and liver, only to liquefy again at a later stage. Then we come to the supposedly growing hair and fingernails, though this was almost certainly not the case. Rather, cells dehydrate post-mortem, causing the skin to shrink and tighten, which can make hair and nails seem to protrude more than in life. And what of the alleged movement of the corpse? Well, it has been reliably reported that non-embalmed bodies may sit up, jolt, and even emit groans as the early stages of decomposition set in. So, was Mercy Brown a malevolent spirit? That is what some would have you believe, and there is little to be offered in the way of physical evidence to persuade them otherwise. But Mercy Brown was surely a victim herself, first of family tragedy, then of a brutal disease that stole her own young life away, and finally of superstition, innuendo and lots of conjecture. Whatever the causes of the non-decomposition of Mercy Brown, she surely deserves the sympathy of the living rather than their suspicion and loathing. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button and if you're new to my channel and you like strange but true stories and conspiracies, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.